Hi everybody, today we're working on a wreath made out of kanzashi flowers. If you don't know what that is, don't worry, I'll tell you a little bit more later. I'm using my Gorilla Glue glue gun with my Gorilla Glue glue sticks because they're super strong. I have an assortment of red buttons, upholstery thread with a sharp needle, scissors, and some fabric. For this project, I use about a yard and a half if you're using the Dollar Tree wire wreath frame, which I am using. Most of the fabric will be cut into four inch squares. The rest is cut into two and a half inch strips. So to get started on this flower, we're taking a square of our fabric, folding it in half, and we're gonna run a running stitch across one side to that corner and down to the other. So I'm not doing anything special here I'm just taking some little stitches clover sells a kanzashi flower maker but if you buy that you're limited to the size and I don't think they would work very good on a thicker fabric like this this is an upholstery fabric it's a ticking that I got on sale for like a dollar a yard at Walmart I bought a tremendous amount of it kanzashi flowers are traditionally used in Japan to make hair ornaments for geisha there's a hundred different variations. This one is just kind of a more relaxed version because they can get very intricate. I just sewed down both straight ends. Now I'm coming back to where I started, making a loop, and I'm coming up through the bottom of that loop. That's kind of like a half knot that's going to allow us to pull that really tight before we stitch it again to lock it in. So I'm pulling it, making sure everything's even. Then I'm gonna go back in and just try to grab as much as you can. And then I'm sewing through the loop twice to lock it in. You can fold them a couple different ways. You can like fold the top down, you can pinch them tight, you can turn them upside down, you can leave them full and poofy like I did. And then you're going to make a lot of them. And I mean a lot. This wreath had 24 flowers, there were 5 petals, that's, uh, I don't know, a lot. I originally thought that I would only need 90 petals, but it ended up being more than that because I have a bunch of flowers made when I'm starting this and I eventually have to stop the video, make more, and then start recording it again. So now I'm just gluing the petals to each other to form the flower. My preferred method for doing this is putting a little bit of hot glue on and then sliding the second petal into place. See how it, I'm, it slides right in because you're pushing the glue towards the center because you don't really want any glue showing in between the petals. So I put it down, push it forward, and hold it for a second. Put the glue down, push it in, and then hold it. And now that's five petals glued together, and I'm just going to stick a little bit more glue in there and close it up. And when you close it up, because you want to make sure that everything's spread out evenly, I stick a finger in each one of the petals and just squeeze it pretty tight to get everything to come together. And there is a lot of holding and waiting for glue to dry in this, but it's not that bad. And now I'm picking out some buttons to see which ones I like. These buttons came from a giant two-pound button bucket I bought from Amazon, I think. Walmart does sell assorted colored buttons. You know, like they have a red pack and a blue pack. You could just get those. You could use all the same buttons if you wanted to. I just, I knew that I wanted a variety, so I just picked whatever I thought looked nice. And we're really just using that to cover up all our work in the center. And you fluff it out some, and that's pretty much it. And you're going to make a lot of those. And here I am just showing you how to do one more. They just slide right in like that. Pinch them, fluff them. I worked on this for weeks, making these flowers. This is not something you can decide to do at the last minute and get it done. 
but it's a good project to sit down, get your fabric, get your scissors and thread, make a bunch of the petals, and then you can put the flowers together later. And now I'm having a little dance break here. Okay, that was a lot. Another button in the center. And then um, make more. And some more. And a lot more. And then some more. And extra. Okay, so now we've got enough to make our wreath. So these are the two and a half inch strips. They're the length of the fabric, which is 44 inches. I got this wreath from the Dollar Tree because it's bigger than the foam wreath and I used this in my holly wreath that I posted the other day. It's just bigger. I feel better about using wire than I would about using foam because that's just going to end up in a landfill somewhere. And what I'm doing is just wrapping the fabric around to create a base for me to glue all the flowers to. And as you can see I'm pulling it kind of at an angle because I want to be able to cover up as much space as possible with the least amount of fabric as possible. And every now and then I'm using some glue to tack it down. So you just go round and round, put some glue, pull it tight, you're gonna add in the next strip, and that's it. You can turn these edges in if you want. I don't mind that they're not finished. You're not gonna see it. But if you're giving it as a gift and you want it real nice and finished and pretty, you can turn those in, but I wasn't going to be doing that. Now I'm getting to the end here. And there's some, some little wrinkles and folds and stuff, but again, it's all going to be covered up. And I had just enough to wrap the whole wreath. So now I'm putting glue right there on the edge and I'm going to pull everything tight, but not too tight because these wreaths, they will bend if you pull them hard. Trimming off the extra. I kind of wish I had turned that edge under so you don't see the selvage right there, but it all works out in the end. So now this is where I ran into trouble because I figured that I would need three flowers per segment and there's six segments so that means I would need 18 flowers and I had enough to do that and I'm showing you that that's the pattern I want to keep all the way around unfortunately that's not the pattern I keep right here I'm marking the support braces so there's gonna be six of these segments and in each one I want to put three flowers that doesn't happen though it starts off I have good intentions of only putting three some of them end up with four, the rest of them end up with five. If you do keep this one flower, two flower, one flower, two flower, then you will need a yard and a quarter to do this. If you end up needing more, you're gonna need a little bit more fabric and more flowers and more stitching and more petals and more buttons. Let's see, even there, I've already put them too close together. And this looks, this does look better, but it's just more work for you. It's up to you. You can get away with 18. I think I ended up using 24. And I think this would be a great project to do if you had a bunch of scraps of fabric because you only need five four inch squares to make a flower. And you know when you finish a quilting project or any project you always have a four inch strip somewhere. But you could also use fat quarters if you wanted a bunch of different colors of flowers, a bunch of different patterns. I just like this because it was kind of candy cane stripey, farmhouse. I love ticking. They had a navy blue one that I didn't get, and I wish I would have. So here's after I've made the extra flowers, and they're going into place. This wreath has really great texture, and because I'm using the wire form, it's not that heavy. And y'all know how much I hate the glue gun string, so I'm using my little brush there to brush the 
fabric to pull all the little glue strings off. Now I'm marking those supports again. Taking some cord here, this is just a wax twine and I'm just putting it on there with a button over it. And I'm pulling it almost straight but I want it to have a little bit of slack because you need to hang it somehow. So I just hung it with a little nail right there in the middle and it, it came out great I think. I really like this. I don't know who I'm giving it to but somebody will be getting this for Christmas. If they're watching this now they should act surprised. And that's it. It's fun. It's one of those projects that goes by really quick once you have everything made. It's just that making everything takes a, uh, a good long while. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you can remember to like, comment, subscribe, turn on your notifications, share with friends, follow me on Instagram, all that good stuff, I would greatly appreciate it. See you guys later. Thanks for watching.